You know, I know I'm kind of getting long in the tooth, but it still surprises me how many technicians have no idea what we mean when we talk about contact breaker points or ignition points or just the term points. And if you don't know what we're talking about, or more importantly, how to adjust and set the timing on ignition systems that use them, you need to watch this episode of SBTV How To. Hey, welcome back. Uh, this edition of SBTV How To is a continuation of the 74 CB750 project bike. I should say it's a budget build. We're trying to invest as little money as possible into this bike to get her back on the road. Um, and one more step before we put it back in the frame. Uh, we need to install the ignition contact point set and get the timing set. It's just a lot easier to do on the bench. Uh, it still amazes me though, and what a lot of guys don't know what ignition contact points are. I mean, yeah, I know they're and old bikes and it was a long time ago since the last motorcycle or car used them but they're still around so let's uh, go ahead and talk about that here's uh here's what they look like for the honda and uh, what you're looking at here my finger here is on the condensers we'll talk about that in a moment and these are the ignition contact points here and here um they're really just mechanical switches the right on the cam lobe See if I can get them real close there. And you can see that they open as the cam lobe turns. Okay, once that opens, these are actually connected on the ground side of the ignition coil primary circuit. And if you're not familiar with how that works, well, I guess that's a subject for another video. But when that circuit is broken and the current starts flowing, stops flowing through that primary side, uh, the collapsing magnetic uh, field is what energizes the secondary side of the ignition coil and provides the voltage necessary to jump the gap on the spark plug. And back in the days we didn't have computers, so it was done manually using these breaker points. So we have to set them first for the gap. That means uh, actually the dwell time, this, the, the amount of time the coil has to saturate on the primary side uh, to build up that magnetic field as high as we can and uh, it has to open at just the right time. So that spark occurs just before top dead center, uh, enough time to uh, get the most oomph, if you will, out of that air fuel charge that we got pumped and compressed in that combustion chamber. So there's two things we gotta do. We gotta adjust the gap, and we have to adjust the timing in relation to where the piston is in its travel. And uh, let's get to it. Okay, before we go ahead and get the points, um, breaker plate installed where it needs to go here at the end of the crankshaft let's go over uh, what you're looking at here uh, if you didn't see the video on how to adjust the valves um, where we covered this I want to make sure that you don't miss out what you're looking at here is what's called a mechanical spark advance um, the section here that I'm pointing at is where the actual cam lobe is that the points will open and close by and if you run your finger through it you'll actually feel it's not a perfectly round but there's a little hump on there that's going to uh, hit that breaker plate or breaker point where I showed you earlier uh, and uh, cause them to open. Now you'll notice here that there are weights and springs and that's so that as the engine speed picks up centrifugal force will throw these weights out and cause that drum here to turn and advance the timing. Again we didn't have computer controls or electronic ignitions back in these days it all had to be done mechanically and that's how it was done. So again, that sugar force is going to throw that out, that's going to rotate that cam and uh, cause the, mechanic, the uh, ignition curve to advance. And we need to do that because as speed picks up, it still takes the same amount for the, uh, of time for the uh, air fuel mixture to burn. So as we pick up RPM, as that piston is moving faster and faster, we have to start that event earlier and earlier. That's what we mean by advancing the timing, okay? So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and install the contact points. Oh, one more thing. Let's see if I can zoom in where you can see it. You'll notice too, there are some marks here. One four in this case, it represents cylinder one and four. Then there's a F and a T. The F is the firing mark. That's what we're going to line up with our index mark to set the timing for cylinders one and four. There's a similar mark for two and three, and we'll go back over that as we go through the procedure.
Did you enjoy the video you just watched? Did you find it helpful? We sure hope so. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up and you add your comments to that section right below the player there. And don't forget to share our videos with your Harley riding friends. Once you got all that taken care of, if you want to make sure that you're the first to know about any new videos that we put up online, hit that subscribe button for us. Thanks for watching.